Fixing and correcting skin tones in your images is probably the most difficult thing you can do when color grading your photos. Everyone's got different skin tones, there's different lighting conditions, there's just so many variables to take into consideration. So today I'm gonna be showing you my four ways on how you can correct and fix your skin tones in your images using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Getting the skin tones correct in your photos, in my personal opinion, is really important. You could have colors off in the background, maybe in the sky, desaturated greens in the forest, but if your skin tones are off, it's incredibly noticeable, just because it's one of the very first things you will look at on a portrait photo. Firstly, it's the person, and then the skin tones. If they're incredibly magenta, you could be like, that's really magenta. Or if it's really, really orange, you could be like, bloody hell, what has happened here? So there are a few things that we can do as a photographer to actually combat and fix this problem. Some of them are physical, so camera related, and some of them are software based, which we're gonna be using Lightroom Classic in this particular case. So what are the few things you can do in camera? So the first thing I recommend doing is not shooting in auto white balance. Now this is a little bit of a controversial topic. Some photographers might say, doesn't really matter, especially if you're shooting in raw, you can go ahead and change it in post. Yes, I would agree with you in that one, but I would always suggest getting it right in camera, which is why I always shoot in manual white balance. Why would you, for instance, shoot in manual exposure, but not shoot manual white balance? It's one of those things that I just try and get it right in camera if I can. So learning what Kelvin does, learning if you're, for instance, shooting in a warmer environment, dropping those Kelvins, maybe if you're shooting in a cooler environment, raising up those cameras, trying to balance out. And then I personally think you'll get more consistent colors if you're doing a long shoot. Let's say you're a wedding or an event photographer, if you're shooting on the same Kelvin, you know your presets are going to create a consistent look throughout your entire image. Another thing you can do is go ahead and buy a color checker, and that is one of these. They come in a variety of sizes. This is about passport size one. You can get bigger ones, you can get smaller ones. I've actually made a dedicated video all about these because I think they're really important. You know you're getting the correct colors. So for instance, we've got the, for instance here, we've got red. You know if you go ahead and take a photo of this and it looks a little bit magenta or a little bit yellow, you can go ahead and dial in to get the exact colors possible. But let's say you shot in auto white balance, and then let's say you didn't have a color checker. There are a few few things that you can do in post to actually fix the skin tones. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom Classic. So my very first tip is all about changing the white balance. And there's two ways that we can do this. One that's a lot quicker than the other, but it does mean that you need a um, certain type of thing in the photo. And we'll explain that in a second. Now, like I was saying previously, if you can get it right in camera, it really does help you out in post. But let's say you didn't get it right in camera and it was very orange, or maybe you were just shooting on auto white balance, and it looked very blue. Let's go ahead and look at this photo here. Now I've already made a couple of changes you can see in the exposure panel. And as you can see, I was shooting in RAW, so I've got an 8,000 Kelvin, which is what I was originally shooting at, which is far too warm for the skin tones. As you can see, they are very, very yellow. Now, depending on what type of photo you're working with, let's say you were working on a photo with a portrait and the eyes are open, we can actually use the whites of the eyes as a type of gray card, for example. Like for instance, I was talking about this, obviously we can use the whites here to get the exact representation of what white was within that particular color environment. We can do the same when it comes to the whites of the eyes. If you don't have this, then this particular tip won't be as helpful. It will be, you know, you can still manually change it using the temperature and tint slider, but you won't be able to automatically do it with the eye dropper tool, which is what we're just about to use. So what we're gonna do, zoom into the eyes. So we've got the eyes nice and large here. Obviously they are in focus, which again, is something you need to make sure that you've got that in your photo. Go ahead to this button here. This is your white balance selector. Go ahead and click, bring up with an eyedropper tool. We want to go ahead and making sure that we're selecting the white of the eyes. Either eye works in this particular case, we're gonna do go ahead and click. What we'll do is it will automatically it will work out at, well, if this is white, then everything else will be interpreted by that color. So for instance, we're making sure that it's got no tint to it, so it will fix the rest of the photos as a global change. Now the problem with this, obviously, it is a global change. So we're not just affecting the skin tones, we are affecting the entire photo, which can be helpful in some situations, but can also be uh, negative in others. Like for instance, I like the warmth of this photo, and now we've completely lost it. Yes, the skin tones are correct, but the rest of the photo isn't the way I like it. So it depends on what you wanna do. As you can see, we've gone from 8,000 down to four and a half thousand Kelvin. So if you want to, you can go ahead and manually just bring it back up again. But the problem is we're bringing back that yellow, which we wanted to remove originally. So how can we have both? How can we kind of 
look, have, go for a color scheme, but also go for a color grading look. Well, this is when we're not gonna be using the temperature slider because it's a global change. We're gonna be using one of the other tips. So let's go ahead and move on to the tone curve. So the tone curve controls exposure, but it also controls color as well. Inside the tone curve, you've got exposure, but you've also got the red, green and blue channels. Now what's great about those channels is they are opposite on the color wheel. So when you change one color, you're indirectly changing the other. Now this is helpful when you're wanting to, let's say, increase or decrease the amount of temperature found in a certain area or certain brightness of the photo. So that is the exposure, which obviously where the skin tones are found. So what we can do is hover over the area and we can actually look in the top right hand corner, we can see we've got a red, green and blue numbers. And those numbers have got a percentage next to them. So red is 89.7, green is 84.3, and blue is 71.3. That is how much red, how much green, and how much blue is found within that section that you have zoomed into. Now this is great to know because that is what we're going to be changing in our exposure on our tone curve here. So as you can see, we've got our exposure, we've got our red channel, which as you can see, we're affecting red and cyan. Again, red is the opposite of blue. Then we've got our green channel here, which is our green. And then obviously the opposite of that is magenta on the color wheel. And then we've got blue here. So we've got blue and then the opposite of that is obviously yellow. So if we want to be removing yellow from the skin tones and nowhere else, we want to be changing the blue channel. So what we can do is go to here and we want to add more blue to, for instance, the highlight areas, because obviously the numbers are quite high, like 91, 85%, they're very high numbers, which means that area that you've selected, which is obviously the skin tones, is in the brighter area of our photo. So we want to go to the brighter area of our tone curve and add in more blue without affecting the rest of the photo. So what we do is raise up that, and as you can see, already it's fairly impacted. So we go ahead and increase that, but as you can see, we're creating a curve here. So we want to do, go back to the midtones and bring those down again. So we wanna find that exact point where those, those colors are not appearing anymore, and we want to just be targeting those. So we're actually, instead of a global change, we're using exposure as a way of selecting. So what we're gonna do is increase those, increase that a little bit more. So we're adding in blue just to the highlights, and we're not adding it to the shadow areas. So we're gonna go ahead, bring that down a little bit more, and go for an effect like so. Now, obviously you could spend a little bit more time on this. I would recommend doing it, uh, spending as much time as possible, getting it absolutely perfect. But that is immediately a lot better than it was. So if you go ahead and zoom out, if I just affect the tone curve and show you the before and after, as you can see, we have fixed the amount of yellow. But the problem now is obviously we've got a little bit of magenta. So then what I'd recommend doing is obviously going, going to the green and then doing the same thing. So I would maybe add in a little bit more green to the highlights and so on. So that is a way, instead of a global change like the temperature slider, the tone curve, we can do basically the same thing as the temp temperature slider, but using exposure as a way of selection. But let's say that still hasn't worked. So let's go ahead and move on to tip three, which is HSL color. Now HSL color is a really handy way of changing co certain colors within color bands. How it works is it's split into three different types, hue, saturation, and luminance. And then each one of those is subset into eight different color bands. So hue controls the type of color, saturation controls the amount of color, and luminance controls the brightness of that color. Then that broken down into eight different color bands. So you control the saturation of red, separately from the rest of the colors. You can also do the same with blue, aquas, greens, and the list goes on and on. So what we can do, as you can see, I've already made a couple changes. This is just the preset, just to give you an example of what it was like when you shoot wrongly. Uh, then what we can do is you can go to each one of these sliders and change them. Now, as a rule, most skin tones are found within the reds, oranges and yellows. And sometimes skin tones also found in magentas as well, but mostly it's found in they, those three color brands. And they're the ones that we're mostly going to be impacting. So as you can see, these changes are already taken into shapes if I do the before and after. But what we wanna do is remove the yellows and oranges from the skin tones and make them a little bit more natural. So what we can do is go to the reds and what we can do is move those back over to the right again and we'll bring more of the kind of red sea oranges back instead of adding in this more magenta look. And we can do the same with the oranges here as well. Now, as you can see, if I add 
drag it over to the right, we're adding more yellow. So what we're gonna do is bring that over to the left and we're adding more magenta in. Now the, the, the sliders I found in this particular case that make the biggest impact is obviously orange and yellow. So if I move these around, you can see we're going for a certain effect. So depending on, obviously, if you drag her over to the left, it looks like she's sunburnt, so we don't want to go for that. We want to find that balance in between. So I will go for, let's say, something like so. So make it a little bit more. We'll go for something like that. So we're going for minus 25, and then let's go for 10 in this particular case. Now, if you're the greens, obviously control the background. So I'm gonna make them a little bit more green. But as you can see, we've actually targeted those areas. Now, what you can also do is go into your saturation. Again, we can reduce and increase the saturation. I'm not gonna change that in this particular case because obviously I like how it looks. And then obviously we've got luminance as well. So for instance, we can go to the luminance, we can darken it, we can brighten it. I'm actually gonna darken it slightly, change, change these a little bit. As you can see, the reds, if we go ahead and zoom into this kind of flower here, you can increase it and decrease it like so. So it's actually really, really handy. So we can go for something like so. Now, obviously you can spend hours upon hours doing something like this, but for this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it nice and short. Now, so let's say you've gone through all three of those stages and tips and still nothing works. So let's go to tip four, which is all to do with calibration. Now the calibration tool is a majorly underutilized tool found within Lightroom Classic. I also think it's misunderstood as well of what it actually does and the power of it. It's an incredibly powerful tool that I don't see a lot of people know, uh, utilize it to its fullest potential. Now, if you'd like to know more about the calibration tool, I'll put a link in the description to what it can do, as well as I've actually got a masterclass tutorial coming out very shortly so make sure to stay subscribed for that now how the calibration tool works is it's split up into three primary channels you've got your reds you've got your greens and you've got your blues and these fundamentally control all colors within the color spectrum now it's broken down into two subsects you've got hue and saturation again hue is the type of color and then saturation is the amount of color we haven't got luminance here because we're not necessarily using that within the calibration tool it's not one of those controlling factors now inside hue is where we could be controlling the color now, if you're finding there's too much orange, what we can do is actually change how red is displayed within the photo. That is what the calibration tool does. It controls what color is what. So for instance, red, if you're finding it's very magenta, you can change that within the calibration tool. And again, it's a global change. This is something that's gonna affect absolutely everything. So what we can do is go to the hue here, and if you drag that over to the left, we're introducing more magenta. If we're dragging it over to the right, we're introducing more orange. And it's the same situation with green, and it's the same situation with blue. You can find this slight gradient here. So for the greens, it controls teals to yellows, and then it's the same situation with blues. It controls that kind of tealy look all the way to blue. So what you are recommend doing is just messing around with these sliders until you get the results that you're after. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and drag those primaries, uh, the red primaries over to the left-hand side, and that will remove some of that yellow. But again, very subtle changes. The calibration tool is very, very powerful. So just make ever so slight changes to the reds, and then I'd probably make you recommend changing it to the greens as well to get the impact that you're after. Now, if you're finding it's too orange, then what I'd recommend doing is actually going to the blue primaries and dragging it over to the right-hand side. That will introduce more kind of uh, yellows to the photo. So depending on what's wrong with your photo, if it's too orange, I'd recommend then affecting the blues. But if you're finding it's too maybe yellow, for example, then I'd maybe affecting the reds. It's a very complicated tool, the calibration tool, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's one of those ones that once you learn it, it's really, really helpful to understand, but it does take a lot to get there. I've, I've only just kind of got around to understanding what the calibration tool does. So. It's a very helpful tool, but it is a fairly complicated one. You have to know a little bit of color science and color theory, but once you understand it, um, I must say it's unbelievably helpful. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. Hopefully this particular tutorial helped you out with getting better and fixing your skin tones in Lightroom Classic. But again, if you can, try and get it right in camera. Maybe the next photo shoot you go on, try and shoot in manual white balance and see how your photos end up. Or for instance, go ahead and buy something physical like a color checker card. These are incredibly helpful if you're shooting in a variety of different lighting conditions throughout the day. You can create a more consistent look. And then you can go ahead and try and see what, how your presets end up to see are your colors correct? It's really helpful to reduce the amount of variables when it comes to light. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really does help my channel out. And again, guys, if you also want to make sure to have a look at the merch, I've got a few merch designs, I'll make sure to put the link in the description. 
I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.